Now, as we have seen in previous videos on the channel, Sublime allows us to create key bindings that bind any key we want to any command we want. We can even apply context to those bindings so that they only take effect in the situations that we would like them to. And this is a very powerful concept if you often find yourself using the same command over and over again. Having it bound to a key will make your life a little bit better and your throughput higher because you don't have to go hunting for that command. It's just readily available. But what if it's not just a single command you routinely use, but a series of commands that you always use and actions you always take in the same order every time? Well, it turns out Sublime has the ability built in to allow you to create bindings on those sorts of chains of actions as well. And that's why today's video is all about macros in Sublime Text. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here, and welcome to this video on macros in Sublime Text, or as I like to call it, the feature that people love to hate, but we'll get into that in just a second. Now, uh, the macro facility in Sublime Text is pretty powerful for the limitations that it has, and if you are familiar with it, or if you're not familiar with it, hopefully by the end of this video, you might have some ideas for how you could use this uh, facility in Sublime Text to make your life a little bit better. Now, uh, before we proceed, the standard boilerplate almost applies. We will be using package dev in this uh, video as we often do, which is uh, going to give us some enhanced syntax highlighting and completions and things of that nature as we go forward, but that's not strictly required for anything that we're talking about here per se. And Unlike uh, recent videos, there isn't any link to official documentation down in the description of this video because there isn't official documentation for macros, at least as of the time that I am writing this. So um, there's really not a lot to it other than what we're going to be covering in this video anyway. So uh, there we go. Now, the reason why I call this the feature that uh, people love to hate in Sublime is because the whole facility of macros, uh, if you're uh, familiar with the idea of macros in general, is it allows uh, you in Sublime Text, as in other software, to record uh, actions that you're taking and then play them back later, which is great if you have the same commands or a sequence of commands that you take on a regular basis, or even temporarily, as we'll see, you could create a macro for that. However, there is a limitation in Sublime that macros can only record what we refer to as text commands. That's a package developer thing, but what it means for uh, us is that if your command directly edits the contents of a file by adding text or removing text or moving the cursor or changing the selection, changing settings, things of that nature, those things can be recorded inside of a macro, but other commands like opening a new window, closing the existing window, opening the find panel, entering text into the find and replace panel, and then executing a replace. Those are all examples of commands that aren't text commands. So those sorts of things can't be recorded into a macro and played back. And thus, some people love macros for what they allow you to do, and some people hate them because they can't do the thing that they would like to do. There is some recourse for that, but we're going to talk about that in just a couple couple of minutes. Now, the macro system itself lives up here in the tools menu where underneath the build items, there are commands here for recording a macro, playing back a macro, saving a macro, and then a list of macros down in here in this menu item here. Now, going from this level up, this item here is labeled record macro. We can see here on Windows, the key binding for this is control Q. That's going to be different on Linux and on Mac OS as is the command that is following this. So look in your menu for this and you'll see what the key binding is for your platform. Now, if we press this key, Sublime will start recording a macro for us. And once we do that, this uh, item will change to stop recording. So you use the same key to start the recording for, of the macro as you do to stop it. Now, this item here, playback macro, is currently grayed out. This allows you to, unsurprisingly, play back the macro that you have recorded. Now, when you record a macro using this record macro function, and when you stop, that macro buffer is held in memory uh, in Sublime, and you can play it back as many times as you want using this playback macro command, which here on Windows is Control-Shift-Q. But that buffer will is just in memory and will 
vanish away when you quit Sublime. So this is what you would use if you wanted to create, say, a temporary type macro. You could record it and then use this playback key. If you've recorded your macro and you want to use it uh, further times than just right now uh, into the future, or even binding it to a key, as we'll see in a moment, then you want this save macro command, which will prompt Sublime to uh, get you to save your macro. And you can save it as a Sublime macro file. This command is going to, as we'll see in just a moment, uh, prompt you to save the macro in your user package. And unlike some other package resources like plugins, you can save macros absolutely anywhere you want inside of your user folder or any package, really, if you're a package developer, and those macros will work. So feel free if you have a fair number of macros to organize them in folders inside of your user package if that makes your life a little bit easier. That's not going to phase Sublime one bit. Now, this last menu item here is labeled macros, and this is the list of every macro that is currently available inside of Sublime Text. Anytime a macro is created and saved to disk, it appears in this menu. Now, the top level of this item menu item is the name of the package that contains this macro. So we can see there's a few in the default package. There's some in the package dev package, and then there's my user package. Now, what you see inside of each of these sub menus is a reflection of what the macros look like inside of that package. So here in the default package, there are a few uh, macros right here, and we can see them right in the top level of this menu here, this sub menu rather, because these are directly inside of the default package. Whereas down here in my user package, there's a folder named macros that I keep my macros in. And in this particular installation, I've done that. And there's a single macro in here called comment line, which we'll see in just a minute. And then uh, package dev also has its macros laid out in a similar way like so. There's a rather large uh, menu item going on there for that. So. If you create a macro and you save it to disk, then you can easily get at it here in the menu. And as we'll see, you can also bind these to a key, which is uh, a great thing to do as well. Now, for our purposes here, you probably want to demonstrate uh, what this sort of thing can do for us. So I'm going to close out of the menu, and I'm going to press the key for recording a macro, which is control Q on Windows. So I press that key and we can see down in the status line that says starting to record macro. So now anytime we take an action inside of this file to do something that modifies the content of the file or changes the selection or moves the cursor around, those sorts of commands, those will be recorded by Sublime for us automatically. So I might say, hello world, like so. And then we might press enter a couple of times. And maybe we go up one line, add four spaces and say hi, like this, then come up to the first line and select all of that. So this is what we've done. We've typed some text in here, move the cursor around, selected some text. And now we we're done. We want to stop our macro. And this time I'm going to go directly into the tools menu and we can see that command that used to say stop or used to say record macro now says stop recording macro. So I'm going to choose that. The status bar says recorded macro with 14 commands. So we know uh, how many actions that took. And when we come back up here, now the item for playback macro is enabled because now we could play that back if we wanted to by choosing choosing the menu item or pressing the key, control shift Q. So I'm going to create a new temporary buffer here and press control shift Q. And we have ended up with that. It says we have, it has run a macro with 14 commands down there in the status bar. And this buffer now looks the same as this buffer does. All of those commands have been carried out and I could undo that and then come up to the menu and choose the playback macro item here like so. And the exact same thing happens there as well. So if there's a sequence of commands that you're just working on for just right now, a set of actions that you're taking, you can use this functionality to record this and then easily play it back by using that key binding and uh, get your work done. But 
We can also persist this because remember, if you record a macro like this, it's just saved in a temporary memory buffer. It will go away when Sublime is terminated and you might not want that to happen. So what we can do is go up to the menu and choose the save macro option. The file save dialog opens up and we can see here that this is prompting me for my user package and I can name this macro whatever I want. It has to have the extension sublime-macro or Sublime won't recognize it as a macro file. And remember, Sublime is using the native file save dialog for your operating system. Some operating systems might not include the extension if you don't provide it. So if you're on such an operating system, make sure that you add that uh, extension into the file so that Sublime will recognize it. And I'm going to name it hello.sublime-macro like so and save that up. It says it has saved the file. And now if I undo in this buffer and we go back to the tools menu, we come down to where it says macros. Now this was in my user package. Now my normal macros I keep inside my user package in a folder named macros. That's this one comment line. But here's this one because I saved it in the top level of the package. So we can see this menu reflects the layout of your package on disk. And when I choose it from the menu, it immediately executes up there as well. Now this has saved a file inside of our user package. So we might be interested in what does the actual content in this file look like? And that is uh, easy to see. I'm just gonna go ahead and close these buffers here. So we're not gonna need those anymore for right now. And if we use a view package file, as we've seen in other videos, this is gonna show us every package file and every package that's currently unignored. And if I add type a hello here is the filter, the user slash hello dot to buy macro file jumps right to the top. And we can see that this is just a JSON file. And specifically, it's a JSON list. The first and last characters in the file are the square brackets. And inside are macro objects, if you will. Realistically, it's the same thing that you would have in a key binding, but without the key and without the context. It's the command that was executed and the arguments to that command. So we can see here that we executed the command insert three times in a row with the hello world and some slash ends there that represents the enter presses. Then we can see that if I scroll this buffer up a little bit that we moved forward, sorry, we moved backwards by lines that moves us up in the buffer. We inserted more characters and then typed the word hi. Then we also moved backwards by lines again Again, and moved forward a little bit and we did some other commands here. We can see all of the actions that we took, they're just right here in this. Now, you could actually, if you don't want to use that macro recording thing, if you're familiar enough with the commands that you'd like to execute, you can just create one of these files manually. You don't need to go through the uh, whole recording process. And I personally, uh, all honesty, tend to create macros by hand instead of using the macro recorder because there's no reason why, for example, these first three commands need to be in here. There could be one insert command that has all of that text. So that's just an example of something that you could uh, do if you wanted to create your own file. But there are many uses for macros besides doing something like we're doing here to enter text into a buffer, although that uh, could be quite handy if you needed to do something very repetitive. Because if we go up here to the tools macros uh, default, we can see a fair few uh, macros that are here in the default package. And if you looked in the default key bindings, you would find that these are actually being referenced in those key bindings. For example, the command delete left Left, right deletes uh, there's the macro rather uh, has commands to delete the text to the left of the cursor one character and then the character to the right of the cursor which you might recognize as the action that happens if your cursor is in between two double quote characters and the auto match function is turned on and you press backspace the the both of the uh, the quotes go away that's actually a key binding with appropriate context as we have seen in other videos 
executing this macro to carry out multiple actions. And that's just one example of why you might want to do something like this by a macro. You can compose multiple commands together into something like this. And uh, an example that I have here in this install mimics something that I have in my own installations of Sublime Text that I normally use. And to do that, we're going to look at the user windows key map here and we can see this binding here at the top of the file to which is currently commented out now this is the control forward slash key that's this the key for doing this on windows and linux on mac os that is a command forward slash we can see it's going to execute the command run macro file and the macro it's going to run is a macro in my user package named comment line and the reason I have that is this. This key binding isn't active right now because it's commented out. If I was to press the key, I get the default binding and the status of the comment changes, but the cursor stays in the same location uh, as we can see there. And if you wanted to, for example, uncomment this, then I have to press the key and then go down and press the key and go down and press the key and go down, which is a little bit of a drag. If I knew that there were a bunch of them, I could select them all and do do it that way and when i save this now what we have here is a key that is running the macro file for doing this and this macro is very simple it uh uses the same command that this key binding would normally use the toggle comment command and then it uh, moves the cursor down one line so now when i push the key it automatically advances forward. And uh, personally, as I'm working, if there's uh, some lines that I want to have commented out, I like to do that because I can comment out and go down. If there's a few lines that need to be commented, I don't have to keep manually moving. I can easily skip over lines and things of that nature. Now, we'll see here that I have a context here. It's currently commented out. If I was to select all of this and push the key, then it comments it and then the cursor jumps down because that's what this macro is actually doing, right? But I prefer something along the lines of this. And this is another example of how context can make your key bindings work better and work, make them work the way you want them to work. Here I have a context that says that this key binding is only active if the selection in all of the cursors in the buffer is empty. And that means that with that context in place, now that I've saved the file, file, pushing this will advance me forward like that. But if I was to decide I want all of this commented out, then it's commented out and the cursor stays exactly where it is, which I prefer in a situation like this. So as we can see here, if you want to execute a macro file, it's really easy. Just use the run macro file command. You give it the file argument and then follow this specification here. The name of the file has to start with the URI res colon forward slash forward slash to tell this command that this is a resource. And then the resource is going to come from the packages folder folder and it's going to be in this case the user package because that's where I stored it. I stored this macro personally in the macros folder in my user package and then the name of the file is commentline.sublime macro and using this sorts of functionality you can really make your life as we see here a whole lot better in sublime text. You probably think of a thousand and one situations where you're using multiple keys always in the same sequence that could maybe be tightened up with the key binding using a macro. Now, as we can see here, macros are a pretty powerful concept and they're pretty easy to get a grasp on as well. If you are familiar with the commands that you would normally be using, if you're creating key bindings for them, you can create your macro manually and you can also just get Sublime to record that macro for you if you don't want to go to that or you're not entirely sure what commands to use. It can also be a great way to learn about commands that exist for creating other key bindings by creating a macro and recording yourself doing it and seeing what happens. Now, as I said in the video, this will only work for commands that are text commands, that is commands that modify the content of the buffer. So there are some actions in Sublime that can't be recorded with a macro. There is, however, a package out there that you can install in your copy of Sublime that allows you to create key bindings of composed commands that are any command that is available to Sublime and not just text commands. And that's a pretty useful package to have in your toolbox 
box as well if that's the sort of thing you'd like to do. And we're totally going to talk about that in next week's video. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you use those buttons down below to subscribe so you don't miss the next video when it hits the channel. And remember, you can always use that comment section down below if you have any questions, comments, requests for clarifications, or suggestions for other Sublime Text topics. But until that next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.